My name is Joe Wiest. I'm the district manager for QLF for Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, and even further east. But uh, I wanted to thank the committee, number one, for selecting the Simmons Dairy Farm. I couldn't think of a better family farm to lead off the virtual farm tours for World Dairy Expo this year. I also want to thank Larry and Therese and Brent and Emily for taking the time out of their busy schedules to come here and present. Uh, they've been a good customer of QLFs for eight years, or over eight years, I think. Uh, so I want to thank you as well. Um, the Simmons Dairy Farm has placed a real emphasis on forage quality and milk quality over the last several years. And as Larry once told me, by improving their forage quality, it's really allowed them to feed a higher forage diet and still get high milk production. And it's a diet that's much more rumen friendly to the animal. And one of the benefits of that over the years has been it's really helped to keep the feet and legs under the cows a little better and keep the longevity of that herd much better. And uh, hopefully QLF plays a small part of that, part of that too, that's tying that ration together, making it harder to sort uh, out the finer ingredients. Um, the other thing I noticed about Larry and Brent is they were on a panel at the Great Lakes Dairy Conference about three, four years ago where they had several father-son uh, on a panel talking about how they work together in the transition from one generation to the next. And it struck me, just listening to those two, that they, they've really got it figured out. And as I got to know them more, and we, we uh, actually spent some time with them prior to this, I think what really makes it work for them is that they really seem to have a genuine, mutual respect and admiration for each other. And as you see them interact, you see that respect and admiration. And, uh, you know, it all comes down to communication, and, and they do an excellent job of it. The other thing that I took away from that producer panel is Larry made the comment that he knew he couldn't be an expert at everything. So he tried to surround himself with people that he could trust as his management team. And we do have part of that management team here today uh, from Caledonia Farmers Elevator. I just wanted to introduce them. We've got Dave Schellenbarger as a feed department manager, Brian Troyer as a business manager, and we've got Greg Zuber, uh, who's been their nutritionist, and one of those trusted people as part of their management team over the years. And we've got Jenna Taylor, who's a little bit newer to the organization, uh, but she's bringing a lot to the table as well. So with that, I want to bring up Larry and Brent, and uh, we'll get this started. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, I am Brent. Uh, this is my dad, Larry. <coughs> and uh, I guess to start, I would just want to thank QLF, uh, Joe, and Sarah, the entire team at QLF uh, have just been a, a great uh, company to, wor to work with um, in developing this PowerPoint and uh, can't be more uh, happy, I guess, to be using their product and to know that their product is backed with uh, quality people. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm a little under the weather, so I might uh, be coughing a little bit here, but uh, I apologize for that. I would also like to thank uh, my family, especially, for making the trip, uh, my mom and wife Emily and my two kids are in the back they might be running around later so just uh, don't mind them but uh, <laughs> they're uh, I think a lot of a lot of farm wives and uh, mothers grandmas I think they get overlooked in our dairy business a little bit uh, you know it's usually the the owners and stuff you know are standing up here and talking about how good everything is on their farm and stuff but I think a lot of times the wives get overlooked so I guess I just wanted to give them a little hand uh, for <laughs> supporting us. So. <coughs> um, I guess to start, um, we are transitioning the dairy um, from my mom and dad to uh, myself and my wife. Um, legally, we do not have anything in place yet. Uh, there's so many avenues. Um, and aspects to look at. Uh, we're still fine-tuning things. Uh, it, it does look like eventually we will be an LLC, um, but like I said, legally we, we don't have anything in place yet, but that's kind of the direction we're leaning towards. Um, and I think, uh, again, as Joe said, uh, Dad and I might be a little bit of a minority when it comes to father-son relations um, in the dairy business because sometimes I think, uh, you know, the older generation you know, thinks they did everything right, and of course the new, spunky, younger generation thinks that they have all the answers, you know, fresh out of 
college, and uh, that's not always the case. And uh, I guess I'll get started here. Um, <clears throat> transitioning to dairy, I guess blending is a, a good word um, for that, the title of that uh, bullet there. You know, I kind of refer it to as a blender. You know, Dad put his, puts his ideas in the blender, and I put mine in, and we kind of stir it all up. And, you know, at the end of the day, we, we come up with a better solution than the two of us had on our own. And I think that's, you know, that's pretty important um, to make good, sound decisions. Um, you know, especially I'm, I'm only 27 years old, so obviously I don't have all the answers. But he's got the, you know, 35 years of experience, and it's just a good blend you know, that the two of us have. And like I said, I think that's relatively hard to find um, in the dairy business um, from what I'm told. So I'm, you know, I won't read this word for word. Um, you guys can read yourself. Well, I think Joe said something very key too, and I, I read that a long time ago, that you can't be an expert at everything. Uh, and we've tried desperately to surround ourselves with people that we felt, one, were trustworthy, uh, one, that were knowledgeable. And, uh, and and could get along with us, uh, even along with our help. I mean, we tell the guys, uh, you know, I'm not hiring you just for a body to be here. I want your, I want your input. Uh, you know, we both want their inputs. Uh, we want to, and then we, like Brent said, we put it all kind of in a pot and we, we stir it up. And, and normally we, the consensus comes out to be a better idea than we, either one of us or the rest of us all had together to begin with. So I, I, uh, you know, I think you said it again too, Joe. There's a lot of trust. Uh, I have, I have a tremendous amount of respect for him, and I think he has a tremendous amount of respect back for me. We don't always agree, uh, but at the end of the day, he's still my son, and I'm still his dad, and we we always part going home that way, um, and that I don't think will ever change. So, um, again. Mom and Dad uh, are the sole proprietors um, as of now. Uh, I do have a younger um, brother who is a junior at Michigan State studying agribusiness, um, and I think eventually he'll be joining the operation, which obviously is probably more exciting for Dad than it is for me. Um, you know, having two sons in the operation, we uh, have our differences, much like the two of us do. But you know, we both, you know, will make the best sound decision for the business. Um, and again, at the end of the day, you know, he's still my brother, you know, I'm his brother, so <clears throat> it'll work out well. Um, I guess I am the herd manager. Uh, we do have a herdsman um, who takes care of the cows and uh, some of the employees. And I kind of, I guess, oversee um, him and the crops, um, where dad is more, you know, the financial part of it. I don't get too in depth in that. Um, my wife, Emily, someday eventually will take over the books for my mom. She just retired, uh, happily retired from the state of Michigan. Um, so she is uh, the full-time <laughs> bookkeeper and um, does all the payroll and stuff. So, And I'll add to the Scott thing. I mean, I, if you're a family with multiple, I think, children coming in, I think it's important as you, the parent, to already start coaching your the next siblings that – it's, it's not going to be a bad thing. It's going to be a good thing. Uh, we were both, you know, my dad, you know, I mean, I guess that's a story we can get into later, but they, we, we've developed a work ethic on our farm and in, our, in, in the rural communities. I'm not telling you guys nothing you don't know. The rural community has a pretty good work ethic in their, in their young men and women that are, that are in that community, and, and, and that's huge. That is so huge uh, because not everybody has that. And you've got to you've got to you've got to start working with that generation and saying that hey, if the next generation comes in, yes, you will have squabbles. They're, you're not going to agree on everything. It's just that's just life. That's the way it is. Uh, but you've always got to look for the good, and there's always good to find. You just got to look. Uh, people always, you know, there's a lot of people that are awfully negative. I I don't do well with negative people. <laughs> I, I'm kind of I, I think we're in the greatest business in the world. I, I, you can't beat it. Uh, but uh, but that's, I think, something that, as a parent, you need to be working with your, with your kids and telling them that someday if there is a partnership between, you know, a brother or a brother and a sister or something like that. Uh, you know, me and my wife have toiled with the, with the thing already. We've got a, an older daughter. Our oldest is a, our daughter. Um, 
and a great kid, helped out immensely on the farm uh, when she was young. Um, but she's not on the farm. Uh, you know, what's going to be, what's going to be fair for her someday and not equal, you know, make sure you, you, you get that difference there. There's a different, there's equal and there's fair. Um, and, and that's, that's been one point that me and my wife have struggled with, uh, trying to find out what's going to be fair. Uh, equal, Equal isn't even into the picture, so fair is what I think is what we've decided on, and then we've got to we've got to come up with that with that number, and that's that's what uh, that's been a that's been a challenge, but uh, we're getting there, we're gaining on it. So anyway, uh, here's some I guess awards and stuff that we've got. Uh, again, that's that's not important. That's not why we're here. We're you know we're no better than you guys are. Um, but we, we do, you know, I guess, feel that we are very strong in, in some aspects of our operation, um, such as forage. Uh, we do a tremendous job, tremendous job of putting up quality forage. Uh, it's, it's extremely intense around the farm uh, when we chop corn, chop hay, um, but there's a reason for it. And the employees are, are understanding why the two of us get a little tense when we're when we're uh, you know cutting 420 <laughs> acres of hay down in one day with four hay binds and two mergers and you know chopping as fast as we can and it, it, there's a uh, I guess some some madness to or some positive things that come out of our madness I guess is is a way to put it. And Dad can start with this here. <clears throat> um, well, I, like I said, and uh, you know, I took over the farm from my dad. He started in 1940. Uh, my dad had a stroke my senior year. Uh, I guess it does say that does somewhere, but I, it was kind of, we got a unique situation. Our farm is kitty corner across the street from the high school that I went to. So, I mean, I could pretty much hear first bell feeding calves and I could still make it to my class. And uh, so it was kind of handy. <laughs> and uh, and we, were, we were always good friends with the superintendent and principal. Like I said, I'd, I'd come home at noon and feed cows and check to see if we had any you know cows calving. And, and uh, I'd even talk to the superintendent to let my wife come with. Well, at the time she was my girlfriend, but having her come along, so you know, <laughs> oh benefit, Steve. Nothing wrong with that, right? <laughs> Had to get her broke into the farm. So, uh, but uh, and pretty much, you know, um, I guess we, you know, the parlor, one of the parlors we we built. Uh, what else we got there? But, but that's. We were in that, you know, at the time, I mean, you know, probably some of your farms, your grandparents or whatever, uh, I mean, we had, we had cows, hogs, chickens, sheep, and an Angus beef cow herd that my old, two older brothers used for FFA. Um, we skimmed it down to the hogs and the dairy when I took it over. And uh, then in 99, uh, hogs got to be so prosperous, we had to get out of them, that business. <laughs> Uh, that didn't work out so well, but uh, but hey, you know you live and learn. Um, also, it's and then from there we've just kind of never sat idle; just have progressed throughout the years, uh, building barns, parlor, um, just you know building our workforce team that we knew we could keep around, you know, for the future. Because you know, obviously we we're very progressive, so we we're trying to. And we have, we've built a good quality team of employees that, that we feel uh, you know, are gonna be around for a long time. So, uh, here's some more history. 1990, we built a double 12 De Lavelle parlor. Um, and then I guess one of the, back jumping to 06 here, we, we kind of doubled the, the size of our herd, um, installed AFI. Um, and uh, that, that right there has been uh, one of the better investments that we've ever made besides our calf pasteurizer, but we'll get to that. Um, it's, it's just been phenomenal. Um, so that was a, a big help in 06. Um, you know, anytime you double the size of your herd, uh, things, you know, don't go as planned. And with Affy, it just gave us a little cushion there to, uh, to make sure that somebody was always watching the cows. You know, it's, Affy's not an employee, it's a computer program, but, you know, that's our 24-7 eyes out there. So that was a a great investment we made in 06 there. And obviously we made a, a strong emphasis on cow flow and, and uh, cow comfort. 
uh, just some of our facilities. Our, our Delta 12 is actually built under an old hip roof barn. Um, that was in 1940. The prior um, picture was. Yeah, yeah, the prior picture under that hip roof barn. So it's, it's a very nice parlor. Uh, does a great job of harvesting milk, and that's what we want it to do. So unfortunately, it's under an extremely old building, but uh, still in good shape. Um, two of the big barns out there on uh, 06, those were built. Um, and this is just our, our dry cow barn that we remodeled um, this last winter. Um, you know, like I said before, a strong emphasis was put on cow comfort, uh, cow flow, um, sand bedded free stalls. Uh, we actually just installed these fans over the headlocks. Uh, we've always had fans over the free stalls, uh, but I think two years ago, yep. we installed the fans over the headlocks to get some more air blowing through there. And if, and if you stand uh, on the east end of our barns with a loose cap on, we can, we can blow your cap off. So we moved some serious air in the barns. Um, that's just a hoof trimmer. Gary Vitek happened to be there when Ann and Sarah were walking around. So <laughs> that's him trimming the cows right there. Um, <clears throat> again, we've touched on labor a little bit. We, uh, we put a lot of emphasis um, on hiring good quality employees that that have the same passion that the two of us have. Um, you know, I think that's that's huge in the dairy businesses. You know, we're here in Wisconsin, and I don't have a worry in my mind right now about what's going on at home because we just have good quality people that take care of things, and uh, and we're we're very diversified. Our employees are really diversified in the aspect that uh, one person could uh, leave, go on vacation, and we don't miss a beat. You know, if our herdsman leaves. Um, I can step in, uh, our feeder um, is an ex-herdsman, he can step in and we just, everything just flows, you know, really well. Yeah, I, I, I think that's, you, you hit it on the head with the passion thing. I mean, you've just, you've got to find people that have the same passion that we do for what we do. And, uh, and that's key, it's, it's just is. Uh, and we, we have found that. Um, the slide before when he was talking about the Affy milk, I guess I, I want to try to keep going back to why they brought us up here. As a, as a, you know, husband and wife owner, I mean, when we look at people and what they make decisions, and this happened to be one of my sons, when we, well, we did that expansion in 06, that AFI with that time was like, I think it was $125,000 uh, to put that in. And, uh, and I said, geez, oh, Peach, you know, we can't, you know, this is blowing the budget way out of whack. And, and uh, you know, I brought it up to my loan officer from Farm Credit, and he says, well, I don't, I don't know, Larry. I, he said, that's, uh, that's an awful lot of money. And I said, well, I know it is. But I said, boy, Brent is, you know, can I say hell bent for election to, to, get, to get this in? I probably should watch that. But uh, anyway, he, uh, I said, I said, well, Brent, if you want it that bad, I said, you talk to the loan officer. Uh, you know, he was going to be out like the next day or in a couple of days. But so I turned him loose. And uh, I <laughs> Sick of there sitting there. Holy cow! I should have had him negotiate the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, I think our loan officer was about ready to say, "Well, how many do you need?" After he got done talking with him, and I, I just sat back. Uh, you know, like you, Joe. You know, some of the moments you sit back and you think, "Wow," uh, you know. I, but that takes. You know, he, he had a passion for what he. He knew what he wanted, and and knew we needed it. And and he was right. I. I it's been one of the best things we ever did. Uh, next to the pasteurizer, but we'll get to that. But uh, I. I it, uh, it's, you know, it, it's having that knowing and trusting that that person is making that right decision, uh, or you hope that it's the right decision. And, and you know, none of us are 100%. We're going to make mistakes. That's just the way it is. And, and you know, uh, an old neighbor of mine, you know, another one of the pieces of advice I got when I was young and, you know, and dad was gone. It was, you know, I, I was blessed to have some awfully good neighbors that kind of stepped in and, and uh, you know, I was 17, 18 years old. I mean, I didn't know what the heck was going on. I mean, I, I knew what I had to do, but I didn't know why I was doing it. Uh, and, you know, you know, an old neighbor said, he said, Larry, you're going to make mistakes. And he said, there's nothing wrong with that. But he said, he said, you just try not to make the same mistake twice. <laughs> you know, and, and you learn from that. And, and I've never forgot that. And, uh, you know, that's always been a great piece of advice that that guy gave me. And, uh, and we've, Desperately tried not to make too many second time mistakes anyway, so. Well, I think that's another <clears throat> um, reason we probably get along, you know, more so than maybe some other father-son relationships is 
is I, you know, with my age, you know, being younger, I obviously make plenty of mistakes, and Dad obviously makes me let some of those, or <clears throat> lets me make some of those wrong decisions, um, which costs the operation a little bit of money sometimes. But you know, most older people, older generations, you know, they won't let their their sons or daughters or whatever, they won't let them make those mistakes because they don't want to jeopardize any money, you know, in the operation. And obviously, I try to make them. You know, far and few between, but you know, the ability for, for him to put dollars on the line for me to make a wrong decision seems kind of silly, and you know, most people wouldn't do that, but you know, he does, and obviously, now um, you know, we're working together a little bit more, and, and like I said, we're, we're using that you know, blender, I guess, word I'll use, you know, for the for sake of finding a better word, but um, that we just it just clicks now. We, we seem to think alike now, and, and I guess things are just going really well. And again, Joe touched on it. We obviously do not know all the answers, and we have surrounded ourselves with fantastic uh, management people to help us, and many of them are sitting right here. Um, some of the other ones are uh, all genetics, and our vets are absolutely fantastic also. Um, the guys obviously didn't know they were going to get a picture taken that day. Uh, <laughs> a little dirty, but uh, obviously Dad and myself, Tom Weber, I'll let Dad explain uh, him a little bit. Me and, me and Tom been there since dirt. Uh, Tom, he was one of my first employees, been with me 32, going on 33 years now. And, uh, I, you know, he's just one of those guys, one in a million guys. Uh, that's, all, that's all I can say. I mean, the guy works like I do, uh, if it's got to get done, we're just going to get it done. That's all there is to it. Uh, it. If it takes 15, 16, 18, whatever it takes, that's what's going to be. Uh, it never complains, never, you know. I mean, we finally got to the point now where we can give him weekends off. He probably has had that now three years or so, two years, I know for sure. And, and, and he keeps, he, you know, if we're busy, he, he'll call up. But don't you need me? And I said, no, Tommy, take, take the weekend off. It's okay. We got her. Well, well, just call me if you need me, because I'm here. You know, I, you know, I can help. And you know, and that's that's, you know, the guy's just like I said. He's a, he's a one. I always told him. I said, when you quit, I'm gone. <laughs> I, I, I ain't gonna do this <laughs> without you, man. So, but it's awesome. been cool. And then uh, Pete Cern is our our herdsman there, uh, third from the from the left. Uh, Taylor Van Munster in the yellow shirt um, is our uh, calf um, herdsman, small calf, small heifer herdsman. Um, calf feeder, and uh, Michael Haddis on the left there is our feeder. And like I said before, he uh, he's been a great asset to our operation. He, uh, like I said before, was was a herdsman on two other farms, um, and uh, we had a job opening, and he came to us, and it was a feeder position, and <clears throat> and he was more than happy to accept, and and he um, has been a great employee. All of them. I was just going to say every one of them. Right? Um, but he's been a great help. Yep. Uh, just some basic facts. Um, it's actually about 770 cows now. We're milking about 660. Um, we shoot for a 60 day dry period. Our cows are broken up into lactation. Uh, that's how we separate them. Um, three times a day milking. Uh, just some quick facts here, rolling herd average, fat, protein. Uh, somatic cell has been, been something that uh, we have been diligently working on. And actually our last DHI test, uh, we were 76,000 on 660 cows. So we're pretty proud of that. The guys have worked uh, extremely hard on that. Uh, facilities, we have two 204 cow barns. Um, or stall barns, uh, 196 cow barn that houses our first lactation heifers, uh, 45 inch wide stalls, and that uh, two row and the four rows have uh, 48 inch stalls. Um, double 12 U of L parlor. We're actually right now remodeling our very last hog barn, which has kind of worked out well for us. We're actually utilizing all of the old hog facilities uh, for calves. Uh, the barns have worked out great for that, and currently. We're constructing a new six row barn as we speak, uh, 400 feet long, 114 feet wide. And we uh, right now have two heifer growers that raise our heifers um, and we're gonna be bringing them all home and 
putting them in that barn. Um, it's just uh, that was one of the <laughs> issues we uh, butted heads with, I guess. Uh, <laughs> sometimes that's putting it pretty lightly. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes we our experience and stuff clash instead of blend, but that was one of the things <laughs> that, that happened uh, here. I I wasn't opposed to bringing the heifers home. Um, however, I wanted them off the farm uh, on a different site. Uh, unfortunately, where I wanted to put it, we didn't own that land. Um, we rented it, um, so we made a compromise, and and uh, he won. But <laughs> so, <coughs> but, not uh, really. <laughs> it was a compromise. In addition, uh, we're extremely overcrowded, so we're going to be we're going to be putting 120 milk cows in there. So obviously, that helps make cash flow. On that facility, work a little nicer when you when you're saving the money from the heifers being raised, you know, offsite plus the addition of the milk cows. So, uh, calf management again. We had two heifer growers raising our heifers, and absolutely nothing against our heifer growers. They were doing a good job. I always have done a good job, but we uh, we just the two of us <laughs> spend too much time moving heifers. Uh, it's just consuming too much of our time and and taken away from other areas of the farm that we need to focus on, so. Um, here's just one uh, row of one of the old hog barns that we remodeled. Uh, these are, actually got two different calf stalls here, but uh, it's not really important. But in the lower left-hand corner here is our calf uh, milk pasteurizer from Garlington Dairy Supply, which they have a booth set up outside. Um, that piece of equipment right there has been, I'll say, the most oh. um, quickest payback. Quickest payback on an investment that we've ever made, uh, by far. Uh, going through pallet and a half of milk replacer a month. You know, back then it was I think thirty five hundred bucks maybe or so. We were spending on that, and that was a seventeen thousand dollar piece of equipment. And so we bought it, and put it in, and fine tuned it, and we've never looked back. Our calves are are hurdling defenses on the outside calf hutches and they're just huge. It's, it's just been great. And it obviously makes Taylor's job um, a little easier and smoother having that. Uh, the calves just seem to do really well on it. Um, so again, that, that right there has been, um, it's been a great investment. Just a picture of one of our transition barns. So we have two. Uh, picture of the two rows, these are first citation. Anywhere from 60 days in milk to, um, I'll say, 200. Uh, braiding. Um, I mean, Dad, I don't know, since forever, he's been AI in cows. Uh, we did have bulls, you know, years ago, but now there is no bulls with the cows. Um, there is some bulls in the pregnant heifer pens, but because uh, um, we don't recheck any of the. We switched to Alter Genetics uh, about a year ago, and we've been extremely happy. And um, the numbers show it. And actually, <clears throat> before I left the office, the the preg rate was 34. Um, so that's just smoking. And uh, again, that's the team. The whole team is is part of the of those numbers. It's not just the people breeding cows. It's it's Michael and the feed tractor being. 10 feet off the ground, driving down the feed barns, you know, dumping feed and catching cows in heat. I mean, I don't know how many of your feeders look for that stuff, but, you know, again, trying to diversify your employees to, to you know, enable themselves, I guess, to, to help each other out um, just makes things go a lot smoother. Um, kale chalk, of course, is a picture in the parlor, but uh, green is pregnant and orange is open. Transition cow management, we, we have a far off dry cow pen, we have a close up um, pre-fresh pen. Maternity pens are uh, uh, like 16 by 20, I think, and straw bedded. About twice a week we'll, we'll clean the pens. Um, I'll put fresh straw in. Um, and here we start the, the feeding. This is where I guess we get more passionate about uh, this area of the dairy 
has really, and Greg can attest to this, have we've really excelled in the last six to seven years probably. Um, this was something that, uh, we were one of the farms that you would drive by and see the tarp blowing in the wind. We were one of those farms. Now I guarantee you, you will never see our tarps blowing in the wind. And that's just a little, you know, that starts right there. It starts with, with bunk management. And, you know, first of all, you gotta, you gotta get it out of the field, of course, but uh, once you get it in your bunk, you know, that's the feed you have to deal with for all year long. So why not do it right the first time instead of struggling with that feed, that mediocre feed all year long? Why not just put it up good, you know, right from first cutting? And obviously this year in Michigan, first cutting was a challenge for everybody. But, um, all of our groups are fed um, a different ration. Um, sometimes it's, we have two groups, it's the same ration, just different pounds per head, uh, or just different um, grouping, I guess, is the better word, and 55 to 60% of the, of the ration is forage. Um, beautiful picture right up there at the top. See that QLF coming out? Uh, but a uh, picture of our vertical mixer. Um, we, we do feed um, a lot of grass hay and straw to our dry cows pre-fresh. Uh, so that's why we have the vertical mixer. We don't grind anything. We used to grind, and, and now with the vertical mixer and the carbide dyes, we, we don't feel we need to. Um, and here's just a little, I don't know if you've ever saw that before, but it's a four by eight sheet of plywood with some glass board glued to it. And that's our, it always stays on the mixer, and that's, that's our ration right there. I mean, <coughs> Greg will print out paper copies for us, and and we'll file them and put them on the put them on the board and file them away, and and it's just really nice because when you're in the wheel loader, it's just eye level. It's perfect for you to, to see all the different groups are, you know, lined up, and it just makes the the feeder's job a little bit easier. So. And again, here's one of our feed piles. Um, I do all the defacing Monday through Friday, so I'm a little anal on, on uh, how the, the bunk looks. But this is how I want the bunk to look, you know, after after every day when when Michael's done feeding. You know, there's not a lot of excess feed there because obviously, um, you know, that's going to heat up during the day uh, when the temperature is high. And you know, there's no mold up on top. You don't see any tarp hanging over. It's just one of them little things. One of my little pet peeves um, when I train my weekend uh, help. It pretty uh, pretty obvious how I want things done, and, and they agree with me. So, um, QLF, I guess we uh, like Joe said. I think we started in 2004 using QLF, and I'll let Dad throw his two cents in here. I <laughs> I probably shouldn't say this, being that they sponsored us. I I mean I was dead against it. I I just. I, uh, I said, you know, what, what do we need this for? I mean, we're, we're running 90-some pounds of milk. Things are going great. What, what do we need another additive for? Uh, I was wrong. <laughs> you know, every once in a while, I, I, I was wrong. <laughs> and uh, it has been a, it's been a good thing for us. I mean, it does. Summer heats, we've been able to get through the summer heats uh, very well, I think, um, uh, this summer. You know, we, I don't think it was a, an extended period, but boy, when it was hot, it was hot uh, at our, you know, along in Michigan there. And, uh, you know, I mean, we heard people about, you know, cows just killing over dead. Well, you know, I mean, things went through very well and the breeding just, you know, I think we only had one herd health that, and we, you know, we have a herd health every week. So, I mean, we only had one herd health that was really questionable and that was, wasn't that bad. Uh, and, and it's, you know, it's been that, it's been that since, so it, it's, it actually has a place that, well, and when you go through a 2009, like most of you did, uh, you know, you, you look at every nick and corner and cranny you can cut, um, you know, we didn't cut it. So uh, obviously that pretty much is a testament it, it was gonna stay there, so. Um, that's. Um, here's the two tanks of QLF we have. Um, in the pump, and we have everything on a remote, so the feeder just pulls underneath the, the discharge and hits a button and, and uh, comes pouring out. And I guess, like Dad touched on a little bit there, through our Michigan summer heat we had, uh, we were pretty fortunate to keep 
Um, keep dry matter intake, you know, relatively high. Obviously, we lost some, but you know, I think QLF definitely helped that. And you know, people ask us, you know, well, like the title said, why QLF? And, and it sounds kind of silly, but it, it just simply smells good. I mean, that's 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 the that's my you know uneducated answer for you, I guess, is is when that cow gets through that headlock and, and takes that first sniff of sniff of feed and that QLF's in there, it, it just, it, I think it uh, increases, you know, um, uh, her, what I'm trying to say. Her intake uh, or her, her, her intake. intake yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, she just wants to eat it. It just simply right. smells good. And also keeps, you know, the rumen pH, you know, at a more stable level. So we did very well during our Michigan summer heat. And uh, I think QLF was a big test of that. Uh, here's uh something that I'm sure many of you battle. Um, you know, we are a CAFO, um, so we have to uh, deal with all the environmental issues. I have to deal with all the environmental <laughs> issues. Dad uh, does not. Uh, Delegated but, it yeah. out. <laughs> and again, uh, you know, just simply here on the two-row barn, obviously extending that roof over to cover that eave, um, collecting all the wastewater I'll say from the bunker pads, I think uh, the DEQ, our DEQ guy is fantastic. I, I have nothing bad to say about him other than the title of the company he works for. But uh, uh, we battle with that issue a little bit, uh, you know, every time he comes out. I, I think if, uh, if you're doing a good job of putting up good quality feed at the right dry matters, it doesn't leach. It shouldn't leach. Uh, if it does, it's too wet. Um, and again, getting the tarp on, you know, immediately after you are done packing, I think is huge too. Um, so we do have, obviously have our environmental challenges uh, on our dairy, especially with the two town high school right across, combining high school right across the road from us. Obviously, we have to be a little more careful than, than some other people do. Uh, we farm about 1,845 acres, uh, corn, soybeans, wheat, alfalfa. Um, I guess that, uh, you know, has been uh, something that we've, we've uh, paid a little more attention to, obviously, with putting up better quality feeds. You, you have to select varieties that, that are going to, you know, do well in your soil types. And, and with our uh, aggressive alfalfa cutting, you know, you're looking for a variety that grows back as fast as, you know, possible. We're, we're cutting hay. I think that's in here. Oh, here you go. Here's a picture of our two th of this year's corn silage that we just got done putting up. Um, and like I said, we're <clears throat> extremely aggressive uh, when it comes to our forage. Uh, we cut hay on a 24 to 26 day interval, which some of you are probably looking at that saying, you guys are nuts, you know. You're losing so many tons and, you know, you got to wait till it's purple and up to your waist before you cut it. And, and that's fine. I'm not saying that's wrong, but that is definitely not how we do it. Uh, Greg has worked with us uh, um, diligently here over the last couple of years to, to cut more aggressive and, and uh, I think it just it works well for us um, and I guess that's all you know and I think right there is an attest to it. It keeps our our bought and feed costs down a little bit because our forages, our haylage is you know packed with protein and, and it, just, it just seems to work well for us. Here's a picture of Corn silage this year. Um, <clears throat> we had to put a John Deere in there to keep everybody happy. But, um, I think one of the things, I guess, that, that maybe, uh, and Dad can attest to this, uh, we're definitely not afraid to, to go the extra mile, spend the extra money. You know, we're definitely not a huge farm by no means. I mean, we chopped 400 acres of corn, um, but these three tractors were, were on that pile from day two. We didn't have three of them right away. but. Day, about day two of uh, chopping, we've had all three tractors on there at all times. Um, How big is that bunk? Uh, the bunk is um, 100 and about 175 feet deep, I think. And 285 feet wide. Wide. So it's a big bunk. Um, dirt walls. Um, and like I said, we're, you know, those three tractors are going nonstop. We try to get it packed as tight as possible. Uh, just some of our feed storage, we kind of got a wide variety of things. We, we got a couple of concrete walled bunkers. 
Uh, we have an open pad, and our corn silage bunker is actually dirt walls. Um, so we uh, have, you know, the tires here are touching. Um, the guys covering the pile don't appreciate that very well, but uh, you know, it makes us, you know, I guess more money in the long run when that tarp, you know, stays sucked right down to that feed and, and isn't blowing around and letting oxygen in. So, um, here's another, you know, picture of the feed bunks on the upper left-hand corner there. Left of the mixer is the corn silage bunker and the uh, concrete bunker here. Um, you know, tarping the seams is another big thing. If you have old, or tarring the seams, I'm sorry. Uh, if you have an old concrete walled bunk, you know, you might want to look at your seams and see if you can see through them. You might want to get some tar on them or something. That's one thing we did a few years ago, Dad did, um, that I think, you know, just helps keep any extra moisture out. Uh, kind of our commodity barn, it's only a two bay. Uh, the third bay actually houses the QLF and the bag feed. Um, cotton seed on the left, um, dry corn on the right. Um, I guess manure handling is something that we, um, I don't know if you want to say overlooked, I guess is, is probably a good word. Uh, back in 06 when we did our expansion, we focused, put all of our focus on uh, cow flow, cow comfort, um, and we forgot that doubling the amount of cows you have means double the amount of manure that you have to deal with. <laughs> so we, um, like I said, missed the boat bad on that. I'm not quite sure how the fuelers did that. But <laughs> anyway, uh, so we, you know, had to purchase another manure tanker, another spreader, and, and a wheel loader to help with the silage. And so this is a picture behind the two uh, bigger cow barns in 06 that were built. The concrete bottom with a one-foot concrete curb around it that attaches the, the PVC liner. First pit here is for the two row, and uh, the next pit there is obviously for the two big cow barns. Just some, you know, basic community involvement. I guess, like I said, being across the road from a high school is, is some people look at it as as a challenge, and I guess we do too. But on the other hand, we, you know, think of it as I guess kind of an honor that. Uh, you know, we're able to still do what we love to do, and not too many people complained about us before. So, right. from uh, you know, well, like we have a great relationship with them, and, and a lot, you know, a lot of people talked about the environmental issues that we all faced. You know, with all these new rulings coming down. Well, it was it was things that we were used to. Uh, we we dealt with that, being that we were this in that close proximity of that school. Uh, so it really wasn't that big of a deal for us. Um, that's one of the one of the nice things about it so far. I, I, you know, we've 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 hosted some tours. I don't know if that is that on. That's on there, um, and and so that's been kind of neat uh, to be able to have the kids come over and and different. Oh uh, well, yeah, I guess it's up there. Um, usually, like Joe Domex, the the two year program out of Michigan State, uh, they'll bring the first year students out every year. Um, uh, that's I, I actually get a big kick out of that. Um, I love to see the youth coming into our business. I mean, I think that's just fantastic. Um, for all of you sons, daughters, I want to come back to the farm. Way to go! <laughs> Kick butt. I, you can do it. it. It's a great. It's a great. It's a great life. It's a great place to raise a family. I think our the parents out there will attest to that. Uh, look what we look what we're showing our kids. We're showing them a work ethic. We're showing them to think, give them some common sense. Uh, they can make decisions, <laughs> you know. Uh, we're teaching them kids an awful lot. I, uh, you know, it shows in there, I, I teach a senior class, uh, you know, out of our Catholic Church uh, religion class. And I tell the kids every year, <laughs> I said, you probably know more about the Catholic faith than I do, but I'm going to teach you how you're going to use it someday. <laughs> and, uh, and it's, it's, <laughs> Yeah, and, and I, I don't, I, you know, I, I, I'm not that big on it. You know, I, I don't know that much of the nuts and bolts, but I know how you're going to use her. Uh, <laughs> trust me. And uh, and we've that's been a very fulfilling thing that I've done. I, I, it's it's just neat working with the young kids. We had 
we have old preschoolers that have come out, and uh, that was that's a that's a lot of fun too. Uh, uh, that was that was an interesting couple of times there. So, but anyway, okay. Um, Again, university involvement. Dad touched on it. Uh, you know, Joe Domek with the MSU uh, uh, short course program brings his kids out. We just we, we have a lot of fun with them, and, and hopefully give them some good advice to take back to their parents or their family farms. Uh, future, there it is right there. Um, they were setting poles when we left uh, for the new barn. Um, we don't. Uh, Yes. After this, we're probably gonna have to sit back for a little bit. Uh, after this barn, um, so the future expansion might slow down a little bit after this. But uh, again, it was just one of those things that, as we looked at the numbers and and looked at the money we were we were dishing out to the heifer growers, it, it just seemed to make sense. So, yes. Any lucky part of that small for all those cows? Oh no, you you can get them through there. <laughs> uh, no, we actually have. Uh, we're milking 660 right now, and we have uh, about an hour and 45 minutes between milkings. Yep. Yep. Three times a day. Yeah. Three times a day. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's I, that's going to be up here, uh, maxing out that parlor. Obviously, this these 120 cows are going to put it are going to put it uh, to its max. But when your parlor's maxed out, you're at peak efficiency, so to speak. If everything else is running smoothly. You know, when that parlor's running, you're making money. So we want it to run as much as possible, and and you know, obviously that's that's our goal is to get those get that uh, 120 stalls filled with milk cows as fast as we can. And and then I guess there's another thing to say: we're we're not going to purchase any animals to do that. We we've been using sex semen for a couple of years now. Uh, actually, currently right now we actually have more heifers than we do cows. Um, so that's a good problem to have, and we're gonna we're gonna fill it internally. Um, we're not gonna buy any. And like I said, with a new barn, um, we're not gonna have to hire any more employees or do anything out of the ordinary. Everything's in place um, for us to just pick up and roll. Yes. We have bulk tanks. We don't direct load, um, but we we ship about fifty four thousand pounds a day. Um, our the people that pick up our milk they actually come twice a day they obviously wouldn't need to but with their scheduling it just works out better so um, I guess I'm not sure what that would be on a semi load but it's fifty four thousand pounds roughly in the, in the tank, four so. to fifty six yeah yeah so um, and again here's kind of our business motto I guess um, you know we strive every day the two of us along with our wives drive every day to, to provide a, a good quality workplace for our employees and and make them enjoy what they do um, so they're willing to get up in the morning at 4.30 to come to work. Uh, and again, you know, the consumer is what, you know, we have to please. So obviously the, the best quality product we can produce for them is, is what we want to do. And again, with our somatic cell, that's one thing we've been just diligently working on is trying to get, you know, more people on board, I guess, with us to, to try to help you know lower somatic cells down, so maybe our co-ops can give some better premiums for it or something. So, um, and I guess thank you to everybody. Hopefully, we didn't bore you too bad. Um, thanks to QLF, Sarah, and again for allowing us to to share. Hopefully, some of the things we do well with you and. I thank you for listening to us. So on any questions right now, we'd be more than happy to hopefully answer them for you. And if we can't, they will. <laughs>